As the month of July kicks off and we take a look ahead to Niners training camp, which gets underway later this month on July 23rd with rookies reporting a week before that, should the San Francisco 49ers sign four-time All-Pro safety Justin Simmons in NFL free agency? An NFL insider by the name of Albert Breer, a lot of people familiar with him, thinks that the Niners should sign him to a deal to add him to this roster. We're going to have a conversation about that. We're also going to talk about this Niners offensive line and take a look at Pro Football Focus's rankings for the Niners offensive line going into 2024, and they're not that pretty, and I could see where PFF is coming from. First, as we flip the page to a new month, a subscriber update right here on the Niners Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Hope you're having a great Monday. Your weeks are off to an awesome start, and you had a great weekend. We are 30 people away from 134,000 subscribers. Let's hit that milestone with this video. And if you haven't subscribed, this is why you should hit that sub button right now. We bring you informative, entertaining, insightful, thought-provoking Niners shows every single day year-round on this channel. We hit everything from news and analysis to rumors, reports, buzz, breaking news, Niners draft content, free agency intel, and then once the season gets underway, and it starts with preseason week one all the way into the regular season, hopefully another long playoff run, we do watch parties during the year, and then we do a couple of live shows per week as well. So hit that sub button right now. This is the go-to spot for the best Niners coverage right here on YouTube. Appreciate the support. Let's talk Justin Simmons here on the San Francisco 49ers report. Should the Niners sign him? Albert Breer, NFL insider for Sports Illustrated, saying the Niners should do it because he'd be a really good fit on that Niners defense. San Francisco currently, according to Over the Cap, has $31.4 million in cap space. That money can be utilized right now. It can also be rolled over to next year. And as you look ahead and you look at the 2025 cap situation for San Francisco, things get a little bit hairy. Things are a little bit precarious. The Niners could be in a little bit of a financial pickle, although it could be solved. Right now, San Francisco is in the bottom among all NFL teams, in that bottom tier in cap space. Right now, the Niners are $38.9 million over the cap. But what San Francisco could do they could roll that cap space over, 31.4 as of right now, to help alleviate that. So there are ways to pull off financial gymnastics, and there are ways to clear room. But either way, with the Brock Purdy contract extension looming, hopefully Brandon Ayuk gets paid, you look ahead to next year, some difficult decisions could be made by this Niners front office. But at this safety spot right now, with that $31.5 million in cap space, the Niners could use an upgrade. They could use another player in that safety room. They haven't brought back Deshaun Gibson. Talano Hufanga, an all-pro in 2022, is coming off a torn ACL. We're not sure when he's going to come back. Jair Brown is my prime breakout candidate on this Niners defense for 2024. I'm a believer in the player. I thought he filled in so nicely for Hufanga after he tore his ACL. And Brown has instincts, versatility. He can play in the box. He's good against the run, good against the pass. I like his feel for the game. Outside of those two safeties, you have Malik Mustafa, who is a rookie, and I like his potential, but he's young. Eric Harris is a special team journeyman. George Odom is one of the best special teamers in the NFL, but he's been a special teams ace for a reason. And the Niners a little bit thin at that safety spot. So why Justin Simmons could make sense there are a lot of reasons, and here are some of them right here. San Francisco hinted earlier in free agency at wanting that center field type of safety who you can trust on the back end to really hover in that deep portion of the field who has that center field range to pick off passes and is really good against the pass. You think about Jair Brown and Talano Hufanga, they're really valuable players and really special players because of their versatility and because of their instincts. They have knacks for making plays on the football, but sometimes the Niners like to utilize those safeties in the box. Hybrid linebacker, slot nickel, and they're not as good in the deep portion of the field. You also bring in Justin Simmons, and that lack of depth that you have right now gets eliminated. You also add another All-Pro player to this team who was a second-team All-Pro last year, and Justin Simmons for a team that is trying to finally get to the mountaintop. 
and win that sixth Lombardi trophy, he makes your squad better immediately. He's also a multi-time team captain, really good for the Niners culture, a good scheme fit, a good cultural fit, and with the safety market being what it is and what it has been this offseason, Simmons would be a very affordable player. Now, here's what Albert Breer had to say about Justin Simmons and the Niners. I love the idea of Justin Simmons in either the Vic Fangio style of defense. He's played in for the Broncos since 2019 or in a Seattle Seahawks type of defense. That's why I'd really love to see him as the center fielder for the Niners defense, which has historically played the Seattle 3 scheme and also just brought aboard Brandon Staley, who Simmons knows well from the Fangio tree, Houston would be another fun fit for Simmons for some of the same reasons. He's mentioning Houston because D'Amico Ryans is the head coach. I know that Justin Simmons is on the wrong side of 30. There hasn't been a robust market for him as of right now, which is why he hasn't signed a deal. He's still a really good player. And last year, he wasn't on a great Denver Broncos defense. He can still play. He can still bring it. In 2023, he had an overall pro football focus grade of 67.9, a run defense grade of 77.6, a pass rush grade of 71.3. Surprisingly, he struggled a little bit in coverage, but this is a player who leads the league in interceptions since getting drafted. And that all came on 597 coverage snaps. His last four years, he's been consistently a durable player, and he's been consistently very productive, and just has these great instincts for finding the ball mid-flight, making a beat on the football, picking passes off, and I just think that he would be a great security blanket on the back end of this defense. Of course, with the acquisition of Justin Simmons, some might pose this question, well, Chase, what does it mean for Jair Brown and Talano Hufanga? They would still have roles. They can still play a lot. You can find ways to get them on the field in a creative way when you want to have Jair Brown, Talano Hufanga play in the box, a little hybrid linebacker. You can do that, or you can have those safeties deep alongside Justin Simmons. Again, this just adds to your depth, and you have some security in making this move if you're not sure what Talano Hufanga's recovery is going to be from that torn ACL. Certainly an interesting thought and an interesting signing that it would be if the Niners do pull the trigger and they were said to have shown some interest in Justin Simmons earlier this offseason. With that, let's pop up today's poll question. Let's hear from you down in the comments section. Should the Niners sign Justin Simmons? S for sign, P for pass. He's one of the best free agents left on the open market. We're going to talk about this Niners offensive line here coming up just around the corner, but first... This is a great summer deal now that we are embarking on July. I can't believe we're already in the seventh month of 2024. It's crazy, but that means that summer is officially well underway. And if you're looking to support the Niners, rock some Niners gear, you can get two shirts for the price of one. These two shirts on sale right now, thanks to our friends at Fanatics, for just $45. All you have to do, use that link down below. It'll take you to the Fanatics site, chatsports.com slash 49 combo. Going into the 2024 season, this Niners roster is stacked. Offensively, they have so many skilled players who are elite and among some of the best players at their respective positions. And on the defensive side of the football, this Niners team is also littered with the bevy and a handful of all pros and pro bowlers and players who could break out like Diamador Lenore and Jair Brown. And while this Niners team has the best overall roster in the NFL, in my opinion, there is still one glaring weakness, and it's a weakness that has been present for this team over the last couple of years. That is the offensive line, and it remains a question mark going into the 2024 season. And Pro Football Focus put together their offensive line rankings for all 32 teams in the National Football League. They had the Niners offensive line ranked 24th among 32 teams. Here's what PFF had to say about the trench play offensively for San Francisco. While the Niners offensive line features a future Hall of Famer in Trent Williams and arguably the best offensive lineman of the past few years, those around him have so far failed to impress. The rest of the offensive line consists of either career journeymen, such as center Jake Brendel and right guard John Feliciano, or young offensive linemen who the 49ers hope can improve in 2024, such as Aaron Banks and Colton McKivitz. Now, I do disagree with what Pro Football Focus said there about everybody outside of Trent Williams not really being a valuable commodity. 
I know that the pro football focus grades don't really check out for Aaron Banks, but I think he's been a very serviceable left guard throughout his career. And when Trent Williams and Aaron Banks have shared the field together, they have given up just one sack. I am in agreement with what pro football focus said about three fifths of the offensive line. Jake Brendel has been a career journeyman for a reason. I think he's a little bit small to be a center on a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and against some of these really physical defensive linemen on the interior, he can get pushed around a little bit. His run blocking grades last year were really good. Two years ago, he was a Pro Bowl alternate, but he struggles to protect in the pass game. And anytime a quarterback has the pocket muddied right in front of him, right in his vision line, that can cause problems for that quarterback. John Feliciano was excellent last year. Really good as a run blocker, good as a pass blocker. There's a reason he unseated Spencer Burford at the end of the year as this team's starting right guard. I like how he can play right guard. Last year, he filled in for Aaron Banks when Banks had a toe injury. He's also been a starting center in this league, and he's been successful. So I don't have many issues there, but he's a little bit older, and yeah, he has been a journeyman for a reason. And then Colton McKivitz gave up 47 pressures last year, and when he goes up against top flight edge rushers, he really does struggle. So outside of the left side, I would say, Trent Williams, Aaron Banks, three-fifths of that offensive line, somewhat of a question mark. But here's how the Niners can solve that. You put Feliciano at center. I think he's an upgrade from Jake Brendel. Then you have Dominic Pooney and Spencer Burford battle it out at right guard. I think in turn that makes the right guard position a little bit better. You're still going to have a weakness at right tackle because you didn't do anything to address right tackle in the draft or free agency. I don't think Chris Hubbard is a realistic option to unseat Colton McKivitz as the starter. But if you improve center and right guard, it makes your offensive line collectively a little bit better. But it's not a great look that the Niners have really failed to invest in that unit. I get it. They took Dominic Pooney in the third round out of Kansas. Later, they drafted Jarrett Kingston. That's great. But still, going into the 2024 season, that is the position group that could hold the Niners back from reaching their fullest potential. You can tell me all you want about the Niners averaging nearly 30 points per game and being one of the best offenses. That is true. But imagine if they had dominant offensive line play and imagine what they'd be able to do with better offensive line play with all of these skilled players if they invested and had a little bit more talent with that group. They would just dog walk teams and dominate week in, week out. Kyle Shanahan loves to play a physical style of football, yet his philosophy and John Lynch's philosophy in building up the team is they spend money elsewhere. And Chris Forster talked about this back a few weeks ago where he'd rather invest his money in players who score touchdowns. I get it, but I think you got to find a quarterback, protect the quarterback, get after the quarterback. They pay money along the defensive line. They don't do as much of that on the offensive line. And in the biggest of games against some really good defenses, I think the offensive line has been problematic, and it could once again be problematic going into 2024. PFF knows what they're talking about. 24th among 32 teams. It's not great. So next, I want you to share an emoji that describes the Niners' offensive line. For me, it's kind of the yikes emoji, like, ugh, it's not great, man. You could put in the poop emoji, whatever you want, thumbs down, get creative with that. That's what this show is all about. It's about the faithful. Make sure you give me a follow as well on X and Instagram, at Chase underscore senior, approaching 13,000 followers on X, past 30,000 followers on IG. Say what's up, and we'll catch you next time here on the show. Peace.